Yeah, so guys, this is uh, the final interview we are going to have with Ango Didi, who has been around from May to January 2022. And he finally is believing, going back to Louisiana uh, in two days' time. So we are preparing for his departure and stuff. And we are really going to miss him here. He, he he has become friends to so many people. And of course we were family, but now we are one family. So we, we worry, you know, we, we don't want him to leave, but it's important that he lives for a while. And then he is back again because his second home and maybe in future, the first home <laughs> is here in Kenya. So Uncle Didi, overall, uh, what can you, what can you, uh, can you please summarize your experience here in about two minutes how has it been what what is it uh, how you expected it to be or did it turn out different from what you expected when you were coming over to to kenya um it turned out to be what i expected and more mm -hmm. uh you know uh, i what i didn't expect is the amount of love that people have shown me uh, I expected to, I didn't expect it to be treated rudely, yeah. but the, the amount of love and respect that you know that people have shown me has been overwhelming. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that has a lot to do with you know me being an unexpected guest. Mm -hmm. You know, probably when people. You know, realize that she was having that guest over here, that they'd probably think it would be uh, a person like me. Yeah. You know, even some of the donors never even saw, never even knew who I was before I, you know, turned up on the videos. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> I think I think that was you know shocking to people, and you know, then of course by me being an African American male that was a big boost to the amount of love and respect that I received also. Yeah, because you surprised people by the way you blended. Mm -hmm. You know, you there was no culture shock. I can say that, I, I hope so, that I'm right. Even you, though I was light-skinned, but now I'm kind of dark now. Yeah. I got the, I got the Kenyan tan going on. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, because you are actually very light. You yeah. you were very light when 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 I first saw you. But now you are. Look at the hands, man. Especially the hands. This is look at the, the we call it farmer's tan. Yeah. Look at my farmer's tan. Mm -hmm. So you used to this be like. This is my red? color. Yeah. This is my original color. Mm -hmm. This is what I am now. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you have really like had the organic. You know, there are no GMOs, just organic food. And that has really contributed to you, you. How do you how do you rate your health? Uh, do you think you are healthier or worse off when you compare how you were at home and, and now? I think I'm more healthier. Okay. Because the food here is, is of course, is different. Mm -hmm. It's all homegrown food. Mm -hmm. it's, these are not you know the the meat that we eat, the beef, the chicken, all that comes from shops and butcheries. You know, it doesn't come from factories. We don't buy the, you know, our meat in packages from the stores. Mm -hmm. It's all homegrown. Like we ate a chicken yesterday and mm -hmm. one second the chicken was alive, you know, then uh, two hours later we were eating it. Yeah, <laughs> they run around chickens. <laughs> you know, so and those are chickens with no chemicals. None of that other you know, stuff that we used to be eating in the Western world. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, more healthier. Okay. So uh, I guess I'm gonna have to, when I get back, is get used to eating the unhealthy. <laughs> Cause I gotta eat. <laughs> so uh, I, I'll probably have to ease myself back into that. I can't just go back and start stuffing my face with a lot of stuff because I'm gonna get really sick. <laughs> but uh, the food here is, is much more healthier. Okay. Wow. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. I know, with my body size, I think if I'm, I'm, I go to America, I'll be overweight. I will really like explode <laughs> because I'm quite big. You know, with the organics I eat. So yeah. if I eat the GMOs, I'll grow so big. Yeah, because they taste good. 
<laughs> you know, you, you taste like, oh, this tastes good. Yeah. Like, eat, 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 eat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, what is your overall rating of of Rise Up Society? Of course, you had had a lot of stories about us. You know, when you Google my name or Rise Up Society, a lot of information comes up. Mm. And with your own admission, at some point, you had believed the information that had been put there by some few individuals. So um, now. What is your rating of Rise Up Society uh, from from away and now having been here for almost eight months? You know, in my years of, of following Rise Up Society, I've always dreamed about coming here and you know imagining what it would be like to go out in the field and, and do certain things. And it's been more than what I expected. You know, just actually being here and seeing firsthand of what goes on behind the scenes of jigger digging, uh, concreting, uh, buying bedding for the uh, uh, for the people that we're helping. Um, so I think it's 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 it was it's been more 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 than what I have expected it to be, mm -hmm. um, and it's been a great experience. Okay. It's been a life changing experience for me. Yeah. You know, to watch these videos on YouTube for 10 years and then actually being here, mm -hmm. you know, behind the camera, yeah. watching the actual jigger digging. Yeah, because sometimes, you know? sometimes viewers think that uh, we just, you know, roll the camera and then they don't understand that there's so much there's that process. happens yeah. behind the scenes. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> the, a, a video is just the final product mm -hmm. of, of the of that the very end result of the of the entire process. And I think a lot of times, you know, I used to wonder watching the videos, where did Jim find these people? How do y'all find these people? Do they do someone tell y'all, hey, this person has jiggers, or or what is the process of finding the people that we actually help? And it's it's pretty simple. It's just. Um, most of the time, it's being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's being available. It's just being available, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell if a person has jiggers if you just drive around. Yeah. You know, if we're going to see one person either to shoot a video of concreting or bedding, we might stop at the market to buy food baskets. And, at, you know, while we're at the market, we might meet somebody with a medical issues, maybe mm -hmm. jiggers. Or a tumor in the face, or something, mm -hmm. and that right there is we, you know, Rise Up Society jumps into action, not because someone told us this person was there. It's just being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, and I call it. I call it just you know when you're doing God's work, the work will find you. The work finds you. Yes, it finds you. Yeah, the Lord connects people. At, at the right spots yeah in the in the nick of time yeah and then it just flows say for instance the video we just shot with the the kids with the grandfather and his grandkids that we just submitted to their house yes we were going to visit uh teresa galiaca mm -hmm. we had stopped there because we were waiting for doris yes <laughs> and we see the boy walking and he's like and you say like, oh he's having jiggers the way he's walking while we was waiting on Doris, we started filming. It wasn't something that was planned. No. It just was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And look what happened. You know, <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Joshua. Yes. We didn't know anything about Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua, the kid with the, the heart issues. Yeah. Doris was waiting on us. Mm -hmm. And she seen the mother and the boy walking. And they asked her for a donation. Mm -hmm. And she explained to them what with the organization she's with and they might be able to help that's how we ran across joshua yeah it wasn't we didn't go out looking for him they found us yeah so people finds rise up society yes they don't go out looking for it but mm -hmm. they're in the right place at the right time and it's just it's, it's this is rise up society is truly god's work mm -hmm. it's doing god's work yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I imagine, and, and you know, the, most of the people we find are at the very least at the end of life. Yeah. Most of those people would have lost hope. Mm -hmm. Everybody that we have touched, they, they we were the last option. Mm -hmm. Most of them had actually given up. I can even say all of them. Mm 
Yeah. Because when you are beaten by jiggers, what hope do you have? If even the church will stigmatize you, yeah. then what hope do you have? If, if your own family, people don't want to, to come to where you are, like the old man, uh, Johnston, you know, the, the, the Jigger King of, yeah. of 2021. Yeah. He said nobody would ever come where he was, but God was bringing those kids. So the kids would come and make noise and, and play mm -hmm. at his uh, compound. And, and it made him at least feel like he belonged. People really, but those kids had not come to see him. They were coming to play. They're just coming to play. Now. Yeah, and in fact, one of the ladies said she was fighting with her boy because the boy would pick jiggers mm -hmm. at that place. Mm -hmm. But the boy didn't understand. He always came back to play again. Yeah. So as much as people ran away, <laughs> he got the company of kids who were yeah. coming to play. And so that kept him going until we found him. Yeah. So I, I, I really believe that we are divine. We are called divinely by God mm -hmm. to meet people in a divine way and work in a divine and mysterious way to bless the people yeah. okay beautiful yeah next question um we've had boxes coming in and then what do you say about the donations and because we have our viewers are the most loving people i i know mm -hmm. for real you know in in real life and, and online and everywhere some of the best people i have met mm -hmm. are our donors you know, and uh, they bring in money and, and boxes and stuff. Um, and we have, uh, you have witnessed the expense of um, the boxes. What, 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 what uh, can you comment about the boxes and donations? And um, A lot of things I didn't know until I got here, because uh, I was in the process of sending a box before I came here, but that kind of fell through. Um, but, um, what I would say about the boxes is, and I hope I don't offend anyone, but I'm just saying how I feel and what I think should happen with these boxes. When you send a box, and Jim has, you have said this many a times that you, that you have to put, not the amount of money that you spent on those items, you have to put the least amount of money on there because it's so expensive to get these boxes out. I would say 80% of the boxes people send, you have to pay more to get those boxes out than what they pay for the items. Yeah, it's very it's expensive. Very true. It's, very, it's very expensive. People send things, but yet they don't understand that these things has to be you know, they have to be taken out of customs, which you have to pay a price for. Mm. And it turns out to be very expensive. Um, so I asked the donors to, just to please consider that. And also, when you send a box, say uh, you send a box to Teresa, mm. you have to keep in mind that Western Society has to pay to get that box out. They have to pay for the gas to deliver the box. Also, and this is very important for the donors, when you send a box for a family, you have to understand that Rise of Society can't just go to that house and just drop off a box of clothes and stuff. And leave. And leave. You have to... It has to be a company with a food basket. Mm. 